Hey there YouTube, how's it going? This is Math and Fanatic, and I'm here to show you how to measure some angles. So first of all, you need to know uh, what you're going to measure angles with, uh, and of course you're going to measure angles with a protractor here. I'm using uh, the Smart Notebook Math Beta uh, from SmartTech.com. And uh, you'll notice first, all sorts of different protractors have different ways of showing the center uh, needle, I guess you could call it. And that's where uh, the 90 degree line and the 180 slash zero line form a right angle here, right where they meet. And so some protractors have a hole right there, um, others just have a little line. Um, some it's where the edge meets uh, another line. You, you just It depends on the protractor. So mine is obviously it's right here uh, where these two line segments meet. And so once you determine that, uh, some protractors uh, have two directions that go around. So this one goes 0 to 180 from left to right and 0 to 180 from right to left. And that's going to come in handy a little bit later. So the first thing you want to do when you're measuring angles, uh, I'm going to get this out of the way here, is you kind of want to estimate um, what type of angle it's going to be in the first place, if possible. So I have over here the three angle types. We've got acute right and obtuse, right? Of course, it's 90 degrees. That's uh, what all corners are for the most part. If you think of a normal corner where two walls meet in a house or uh, the corners of sidewalks or the corners of books, uh, you know, whatever corner you might think. Acute is from 0 to 90. Obtuse, of course, is from 90 to 180. So if you can uh, estimate these things before you start measuring on a two-way protractor like we have here, you have a lot more success in determining what angle it's going to be as you start measuring. So the angle I currently have here appears to be an acute angle. Uh, it's pretty obvious that it is acute, um, and if it were to move, if I were to change one of these sides and I were to change um, the direction there, that would be clearly obtuse. And so if it's a little ambiguous, um, and it's, you think it's close to 90 degrees, something like this, where some people might look at it and say that it, it looks 90 degrees, but I'm not sure if it's 90 degrees, how can I tell? Well, you just need to take something that has a, a pure right angle. And I tell my students that they should use an index card because we have index cards in class. And all you really need to do is to take that object and you need to line it up with one of the edges of the angle and try to slide it into the corner, which you think is a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to take um, this square that I have here. I need to rotate it so it's sort of parallel here. And I would line it up with this bottom edge and I would try to slide it into the corner and once I hit the corner there, you'll see that there's some white space here, and so that means that it's got to be greater than 90 degrees, right? It's not right along both of the edges, and so it's got to be greater than 90. So that's one way to estimate. And of course, if it were the other way around, if it were just slightly on the inside, uh, if you were using a note card, you would see it disappear behind the edge of the note card. So you kind of get an idea of what type of angle you're going to have before you even start to measure. So I'm going to go back to the regular type of angle and move this square out of the way here. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is you need to take the vertex of the angle, which is where the two sides of the angle come together, and line it up with that center needle that I talked about before. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up there. See, so now it's lined up here on that center needle. And then I need to align this uh, base side, which I'll call, uh, I call it the base side because it's sort of horizontal to my body. If I were measuring this on a desk or something, it's horizontal to my body. And once it's like that, I need to line up this edge with my 0 to 180 mark. In this case, my base side is pointing to the right and so I'm using the right side of my compass or my protractor I'm sorry and I'm gonna use this 0 to 180 line I'm gonna rotate it and uh, get that to line up just as close as possible so now I have it lined up here and the next thing I need to do is just follow the other side and see which angle it points to in this case uh, it's pointing to an edge about right there and you'll see that there are two numbers there Remember that we were determining whether it was acute right or obtuse in the beginning, and this one right here looks to be acute, so I know it's got to be between 0 and 90. So in terms of choosing which number I need to go with, I should probably go with the number down here that's less than 90 degrees, so that's the 70. So I know my angle is between 60 and 70 degrees. I'm counting from right to left, and so I would come over here to the 60, and I would count that's 60, that's 65, 66, 67, probably 68 degrees for this angle here. So it's important to see what type of angle it is beforehand. Uh, so let's say that uh, you've already checked to see what, ang what type of angle it is, but the problem is uh, that the angle itself is actually uh, the base side that you have is not pointing to the right, it's pointing to the left, and you want to be able to use both sides of that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to group these two rays together so I can do a little rotation. So let's say my angle looked 
more like this, where the, the base edge is pointing to the left. On a two-way protractor like this, my process is going to be the same. I need to line up the vertex with that center needle there, uh, where those two come together. And then again, I need to rotate, so now this time it's going to point to the 0-180 mark on the left side. So I'm going to rotate that up until it gets to the 0-180 mark and line that up. And now I'm going to follow it in this direction. Uh, and you'll see that even though it's a little bit off, because I think my vertex is a little bit off, it still hits. Uh, now that I know it's acute, I'm using the top, uh, the top column, I guess you could call it. And if I were to count from left to right, I'm getting 60, and I'd be right back at about 68 degrees. So that was the same angle, I just rotated it. And so uh, being able to use both sides of the protractor is pretty powerful. Um, again, if you... Um, so let's say that you encounter an angle that um, you know is facing downwards for you. Uh, the best part about encountering these angles, most students will get these angles on a piece of paper at some point, and so all you really need to do is just rotate the paper so it's in an orientation which you're comfortable with. So you rotate it until either you have a base side that points to the right, or you rotate it until you have a base side that points to the left, whichever way you want to do. All right. So uh, again, just in a wrap up, you estimate what type of angle it is before, line up the uh, center needle with the vertex of the angle, and then you uh, line up that base edge with the 0, 180 mark, depending on which, which side it is, and then you read uh, the other arrow here. So if you have any questions on this, please feel free to uh, leave questions below. I am Matha Fanatic and I'll be talking to you soon.